Model steam engines for beginners part 21. Small but important modifications to a Stuart Victoria steam engine. This Victoria is part of my collection. When I bought it, it was complete with a boiler, but the boiler was far too big for the engine, so I rebuilt this boiler a while ago because it was looking a bit worn. And I intend to use it to supply steam for a Stuart triple expansion engine that I'm working on. I haven't run this engine for a while because there are one or two very small problems with it. Now I'm going to put the problems right. First thing to do, pump some oil into the cylinder and connect an airline. It's not sufficient just to push the airline onto the inlet fitting. I need to fasten it securely, so I'm using a cable tie for that. This is a very good way of holding silicone rubber tubing to small fittings. It's always a good idea to cut the loose end off the cable tie just so you don't poke yourself in the eye. But it is quite important to use a square-ended cutter to chop off the excess. If you use a normal side cutter, it makes it very sharp. And believe me, I speak from experience. Here I'm oiling the engine. Every part that moves gets a good coat of general lubricating oil. This isn't engine oil, by the way. Engine oil isn't so good because it contains additives which will generally attack things like silicone rubber seals. This is proper steam engine lubricating oil that I get from a company called Hallett Oils. The small clicking type noise you can hear is because I also lubricated the inlet to the water pump and occasionally it makes a bit of a noise. Here's one of the problems with this engine, the timing is not set quite right. And to make matters worse, I cannot adjust the grub screw that holds the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft. That's because whoever built this engine, and I'm not guilty of that, threaded the eccentric sheave slightly off-centre. Which means that the hole I drilled in the eccentric strap is not big enough to allow me to adjust the grub screw. Why haven't I fixed this before? Well, it's just one of those things. The thought of doing this which is taking off the eccentric strap using a spanner because you cannot get a socket in there, it provided me with every excuse that I can think of not to do the job, but the time has come to sort it out. Eventually, after a lot of fiddling about, both of the bolts were removed and I could withdraw the eccentric strap. And here is the problem. As you can see, the hole in the centre of the eccentric sheave is not in the centre of the eccentric sheave. While I'm doing this job, it seems like a good idea to fit a brand new 6BA grub screw. I selected one from my box of 6BA grub screws, and here I'm tightening it into position. Instead of just putting this engine back together, I'm going to machine the eccentric strap so I can use a socket on it. A much better idea, and it will make it far quicker to remove it in the future. All I have to do is put it in the milling machine like this and mill across to just give a bit of clearance for a socket. This was a very simple job to do and in no time at all, after cleaning it up, the part was ready to be refitted to the engine. And now it's top tip time. I have a few of these nut spinners and they don't normally have a slot in the end. All I do is press them up against my metal cutting bandsaw and cut a slot in the end to take a screwdriver. So now it's really simple. I can just use it as an extension to the screwdriver to remove and refit small bolts. I also drilled the hole in the eccentric strap a little bit bigger. So now I can compensate for the fact that the grub screw isn't in the middle by moving the Allen key across. Once I put the parts back together just to make sure that they worked, I ran the engine but the timing's not right and you can hear that it's knocking a bit. I'm going to diversify for a moment and fit some new oil cups, I think. There's plenty of time, I'm just taking it easy before going into the obsessive mode of adjusting the position of the eccentric. I'm going to fit some oil cups to the main bearings and to the crosshead guides. And these days, I like where possible to use these, they're very good. They come complete with a needle valve, which is a bit overscale and a bit unnecessary. So I drill them out in the lathe using a centre drill. And this, as you will see shortly, makes it very easy to fill them with oil. In this clip I'm doing just that, and there's a vent hole round the outer edge at the top. And this vents the oiler to let the air out, so they're very easy to fill up. I want to put an oil cup on top of this eccentric that drives the water pump, but I don't want to use one of the glass ones, just a normal one will do. 
Here I'm removing the pin that holds the eccentric rod to the water pump ram. Then I took it over to the drilling machine and drilled out the hole tapping size for 5BA, which is the thread on these oil cups, and here is the oil cup that I fitted. A bit more lubrication and I'm all ready to go. I also pumped some oil into the inlet of the water pump because it's normally the water that does the lubrication. For general bench running like this I thought it would be a good idea to make sure that there's some lubrication inside the pump. Once I've fitted the oil cups I tweaked the timing of the valve. And this is done by adjusting the position of the eccentric on the crankshaft. I'd like to mention something about the valve linkages of this type on a Stuart Victoria and other Stuart models. With the valve linkages on the rocking arm, it's very easy for them to come loose. If you find that adjusting the valve timing using the eccentric sheave method, it's not getting any better, you need to look at the valve rocker arms. And notice for beginners, please do not try this at home. It takes a lot of practice to know exactly when to gently tap the valve gear linkage in order to correct any slight error in the position of the slide valve. In this case, it's not where to hit it that's the issue, it's when to hit it. And you hit it very gently, but you have to time it precisely right and eventually you will find that the engine suddenly starts to run perfectly. And as you can see here, the valve timing is correct. Admission is just before top dead center at each end of the piston. All I need to do now to complete the sequence is just do a very, very fine tweak to set the valve timing to what I would think is near perfection. Now the engine is running as it should, it will run incredibly slowly and also very fast. That's all I can say in this episode, the valve linkages are all tight and the engine's valve timing is far better than it was. The oil in the water pump is still making that strange sound but I can't do anything about that. I'd rather have it lubricating than running dry. I'm going to leave the engine running till the end of the video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Time for a bit of slow motion, I think. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.